Signal Simulator balances awkwardly on a unique tightrope. It has wide audience appeal with its paranoid, atmospheric, yet goofy horror, but it primarily leans on the simulator genre, making its gameplay both overwhelming and exhausting for unsuspecting newcomers. If you are new and interested in Signal Simulator, I'm sure you have found yourself here for one of a handful of reasons. I would imagine the vast majority of viewers want to know more about Signal Simulator after they saw one of the game's clip-worthy moments. This is so creepy. What is this? What is this? Is it a module thing? What? 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 <laughs> no! You might also be here because you enjoy simulator games, and this is definitely appealing with it being one of the oddballs in the genre. I think in both of these cases, Signal Simulator won't fulfill the wants of these groups, since the game tonally bounces between a fictional horror title and an honest-to-god simulation of what it's like to be a radio astronomer. By combining the past two mentioned ideas of horror and simulation, we find ourselves with a game that has some really great elements in both categories, but ultimately feels like a bit of a mess. I'm going to stop myself here, and if you are new to the game, I suggest you stop yourself too. The game provides a really unique issue for me as a reviewer. On one hand, I don't want to spoil any details about the way the game is played, because the first 10 hours of Signal Simulator are genuinely enjoyable. It has a fantastic learning curve and a steady stream of horror-related events, all the while the player is getting used to the game's paranoia-inducing audio. One of the major issues I have with the game currently is a lack of endgame content, or moreover, missing content. There are events that exist within the game, but nothing is attached to them. The developer has been releasing updates, but as of writing this script, it has been over 8 months since the game was last updated, leaving me worried that this might be the final product barring a massive change to the game down the road. I'm giving a spoiler warning here before I start talking about the game in greater detail and showing off specific spoiler events and mechanics. In Signal Simulator, you play as a scientist who uses radio telescopes in order to find extraterrestrial signals deep in space. Gameplay-wise, this translates to checking off a list of procedures in order to download the given signal and receive a reward. The reward can be one of three different things alongside some in-game credits. These credits will grow in value the larger the signal was and can be spent on upgrades to make the entire signal hunting process much smoother. The most common reward will be a jumbled mess of digits and letters resulting in nothing. Another reward is a 10% chance of a line of dialogue from one of the game's four storylines. These are the main objectives you will be grinding for, and the messages don't come together in correct order. You need to piece them together yourself like a puzzle. Lastly, the third and final possible reward is an event signal. These are large major events that can have both brief effects, something like a large spaceship appearing then flying away, or they can place a permanent landmarker on the map like this booster. These events are very rare and will only appear on specific real-life days of the month, specific real-life times, and specific in-game times. If these three checks are filled, then when the player scans, they are guaranteed to find these signals. A large portion of these event signals have to be done in a specific order for them to appear, and due to the way the game checks for real-life dates, you have to wait as long as three weeks to continue parts of the chain. However, these rewards are the main thing the player is working towards. These story and event signals are the carrot at the end of the stick. But let's talk about that stick. What are we actually doing in Signal Simulator? Like mentioned earlier, we are running down a list of objectives that have been chained one after another. You must scan for signals, depolarize the signal, find what wavelength the signal is on, rotate your antenna to the signal, and then lastly download the information from the signal. Most of these steps are one-button affairs. Rotating your antennas is the most engaging of these tasks, but just requires the player to set distances and watch these bars. This list of tasks have to be done in the same order every time to find a signal. This isn't saying that the formula is set in stone. Outside forces can add another step to your list. Sometimes servers will crash and you will be required to go fix them. Lightning can knock antennas offline, making you have to 
do a manual restart, and storms can push your antennas off course, forcing them to be constantly reset in order to maintain a strong connection to any given signal. These situations are fairly uncommon, so you will likely find yourself with a lot of downtime in between antenna moving and signals downloading, especially in the early game. You can, of course, complete some of the chores around your workplace, like cleaning the solar panels and cooling down the servers, but you also have the choice of exploring your base. There are a ton of alien-themed curiosities and easter eggs that are a joy to find. If you don't want to risk any server shutdowns or issues that you can't monitor, then just stay at your desk and watch MP4s off your computer from this in-game VHS player. While everything may seem overwhelming at first, it's actually rather simple and wants you to take it easy and relax. There are no mechanics that punish the player for not getting a signal, in fact you'll get paid credits for any amount of the signal you have downloaded, even if it's just 1%. The only punishing mechanic is having low system efficiency, but this can be fixed by cleaning solar panels regularly, cutting energy sources off when you don't need them, and just waiting for the sun to recharge the system. That slow pace in the early game leans heavily into the game's favor and showcases its other strong element. The horror. The developer has stated before that Signal Simulator is not and will not become a horror game. First off, I can understand this line of thinking. This is foremost a simulator, not a horror title. In the same way that Lisa the Painful uses comedy as a break from the oppressive game world, Signal Simulator uses some paranoia-inducing tricks to keep you entertained during its quiet moments. Audio is by far the game's strongest feature. The loud and droning sounds of your antenna changing positions are often accompanied by a steady rhythm of clicks, clacks, and whatever this sound is. Sound pacing? I don't really know what it's called, but the choice in the way that the sounds are implemented during signal scans is perfect. All the sounds during the first three steps are foreign and are meant to build excitement towards the possibility of finding something new. This is immediately followed up by the droning antenna movement and rhythmic beat of the clicks from the coordinate locator, and all of this is then disturbed by the sound of your hard effort, a random, usually unpleasant sound from deep in outer space. The anticipation, followed by a low to keep focus on work, and then finish with the reward of something weird and unnerving. But the audio isn't the only thing up this game's sleeve. There's this lovely little fellow. Periodically throughout your playthrough, these aliens will watch and mess with your stuff. In a gameplay sense, they are harmless, but it just adds to that feeling of always being watched and never knowing when they might just pop up. I would like to point out that the way this desk was both perfectly placed and designed, your back is turned to the one open spot in the room and you aren't allowed to look back there without getting out of your desk. The desk is also designed to display as much information as possible, which also has the inverse effect of hiding all the info in the room you're working in. Seriously, the only thing that you can see past your desk is this monitor on the left here, and the clear open window looking up at space. While I wouldn't say the game has an oppressive atmosphere, it certainly makes you feel vulnerable throughout the entire playthrough. As much as I do love this game, it isn't without its fair share of problems. I think its gameplay loop is good, but becomes tiresome after a few hours, since the loop is never really expanded upon. This is where I believe I may be at fault. I've never really played nor have I had a lot of interest in simulator games. As I understand it, there is a lot of repetition in the genre. Euro Truck Simulator would obviously require you to drive a truck every time you boot the game up, but the key difference here is you take a new route each time. Maybe today you'll be driving on narrow roads and climbing mountains, while the next you'll be cruising down the highway. These two scenarios, while using the same controls, require different rules and responses from the player. I imagine these small differences are what helps the longevity of these titles. Unfortunately, Signal Simulator in its current state has none of these differences and the gameplay just becomes repetitive in a dull way. 
Besides a random reboot, a lightning strike, and the wind caused by a storm, there is no variation to gameplay, and these are the game's only true random factors. The solution to two of these three mentioned problems is to drive to the affected antennas and push a button, or type in reboot. The wind is the most interesting mechanic, though its solution is also simple. The player just needs to keep motioning the satellites to return to their initial location. This way you can maintain your signal. What I'm complaining about may not seem like an issue. When starting there are so many buttons and the game can be overwhelming. The tutorial, while not unintuitive, is slightly out of order and floods the player with solutions to problems that haven't shown themselves. An example of this is the game will give you info on how to calibrate antennas when you haven't even finished attempting to download your first signal. The difficulty of the early game leads to a fun learning curve of slowly figuring out what everything on your desk does and when to use it, which lasts about 8 hours until the player deduces all the options and finds out about 70% of what's on their desk functionally does nothing to change gameplay. I feel at this point in the script I keep finding new ways to say the same problem. Signal Simulator in its current state doesn't have enough content, or at least enough variation to maintain the average player's interest. This problem is highlighted by the scarcity of rewards. A 10% chance of finding a story piece doesn't sound too bad until it's given some context. I have 31 hours in Signal Simulator. It takes me around 6 minutes to start and download a signal. At this rate, I will essentially have gained one of 118 story signals after an hour's worth of work. The event signals are far worse. They must be completed in a chain at a real life date, a real life time, and an in game time. Specific signals can only occur after other specific signals have been completed. I've mentioned this earlier. If a player was to play the game blind and honestly, they would need to test two signals, one for the in game day and night times, at every hour on every day of a month. It would then take 68 to 69 days of consistently playing the game in order to complete the chain of event signals. On top of this, only two of the six chained events actually have an event tied to it, so the player's reward for getting four of these signals is literally nothing. I can understand what the developer is trying to do here. Scientists spend their whole lives doing this exact task with little to show for, let alone any scrap of evidence pointed towards the extraterrestrial. The developer has stated that this is a simulator game first, and as such is trying to treat its content as realistically as possible. But I would argue other simulator games take liberties on what is realistic in order to provide a smooth experience for the player. Unfortunately, the way that the game's marketed and played, I believe the main customer for this product are people interested in the horror sides of things. This may go against the developer's wishes, but I think at the very least rewards should be handed out regularly and that the chaining of events should be handled in a different way. Maybe make them completely random or at the very least shorten the gap in between events. I like a lot of what is here. I think Signal Simulator is really unique. I would even go as far as to say it's one of a kind, but I think there are several small things that could be expanded upon to maintain general player interest. I understand not wanting to commit to the horror side of Signal Simulator, it wasn't the original purpose of the game, but there are some changes that can be made and can still maintain the game's original identity. These small alien events happen too infrequently. I know this is due to the fact that there are only 4 events that can happen, but this can easily be changed. Joel from Vinesauce has already shown that the game can be modded and that you can have the alien spawn at windows or corners in a hallway. You can program random doors to open and close, and I'm guessing you could probably program lights and doors to lock and turn off when the player isn't looking. The side? What are you talking about? Ah! I think these changes will do enough to elicit more of a reaction from the player while not changing the core identity of the game. That feeling of being watched is powerful, so we should emphasize it, especially since it doesn't pull focus away from finding the signals. Making compromises on the realism would be a welcome change. As it stands, doing the same task over and over again without variation quickly becomes dull. The immediate solution to this problem is that we should just add more steps or checks to this list of procedures. Now what I personally believe is more devastating effects should happen when not playing the game properly. 
Now, of course, these new problems for the game that I'm about to propose would directly clash with the more realistic approach that the game is going for. But seeing how the game already takes plenty of liberties for jokes at the expense of realism, I think these will be fine in the long run. System efficiency should shut down functions depending on how poorly the system is running. Maybe the game can check this every 10 to 15% of the efficiency that is lost, and that way you can start turning off very specific functions that give info to the player. Like not knowing the minimum azimuth, or not being able to check the temperatures of the servers. Speaking of the servers, there's a tiny piece of info displaying viruses in this corner right here. At the moment this just exists as visual flare, but I think this can also be used as a possible mechanic to vary up gameplay. Maybe you could accidentally acquire some of these viruses and it could swap up your controls on your tools, or the virus could just move your antenna into incorrect locations. I think the virus idea is the least realistic of the bunch, so I don't expect a change like this to happen, but at the very least I think it could just vary up gameplay enough that it could be a welcome addition. Maybe you could accidentally get a virus every now and then from a signal download. Or who knows, maybe some of the signals are fake ones and you might be thinking you're getting it from a terrestrial planet, but it turns out you're just downloading some dude's crappy virus from Earth. The only other suggestions I have at the moment is to of course finish the event signals, and lastly add smaller discoveries to the rover part of the game. The way that the rover currently works, you will run out of things to discover relatively quickly. The rover is one of the bigger side features of the game, but the mechanics surrounding it are easy to figure out, so it kind of makes itself end up feeling more like a time sink than anything. Signal Simulator gives one of the best first impressions in recent memory, but once time is put in and mechanics are learnt, it doesn't offer a lot to keep you sticking around. I like Signal Simulator. I was so impressed by my first impression of it, I gave a genre I had no interest in a shot. I liked it so much I put over 30 hours into it, and I know for a fact that I got my $20 out of the game. The question becomes, will you? If you find yourself being the average consumer and you're willing to spend $16 for a night release of a movie, then I think a $20 game for what amounts to eight, at a minimum, what amounts to eight hours of good content is definitely worth the cost. Here's hoping that we get an update in the near future, and I don't know what to say other than I think this is a really great game and you should try it out. I want to thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you have a good day, and goodbye.